Welcome to the Newmar 2024 Country Star Diesel Pusher, floor model 3418. We're going to walk you through the coach and introduce you to all the functions and the features and how they work. So to start with, we'll come over here and we'll open the hood. There's a latch in the first door compartment on the driver's side. Just pull and that releases the hood. Then you come over here and lift up. You'll see there's a prop rod here. Just grab the prop rod, turn it down, and you can put it in the prop rod slot right here. So underneath the hood, starting from this side and working our way over, you'll see you've got your air horns here. And beside your air horns, you've got an uh, air uh, hookup, an auxiliary air hookup. As long as the coach is aired up, you've got air supply here. This one is an emergency air fill. It has a twist cap that you can take off and fill here. The, there's an additional paddle uh, on-off valve on, on the side of these to open and close. You have to open and close them like this. When you're finished, just put the cap back on. You got your uh, Cummins uh, generator. Uh, the generator has uh, instructions here and service information. It has information on what type of antifreeze, what type of oil. This is your oil fill. This is your coolant fill, your antifreeze fill. There's switches down here along with the Hobbs meter. This switch here is your breaker. As long as the breaker is up, that is turned on. So that when you turn your generator on here, this is your on off switch for the generator, you'll have power. If this is flipped down and, and your generator's running, you won't have power in the house. So make sure that's flipped up and it's not tripped. Uh, it might look like it's slightly up, but it has to be all the way up. If it's not, you'll have to flip it down and then back up to make sure that it's on. Just be, if you press down, that will turn it off. Again, to start it, you want to press towards the top. You can hear it prime. Hold it down, that starts it. To turn it off, just press on the bottom and that turns the generator off. Above the generator, you have an interior light with a manual switch for on and off. To the left of that, you have your HVAC system for the dash area and the cockpit area. This controls the heat, defrost, and air conditioning in the cockpit area. These hoses that come down out of it are the drain hoses for any moisture that accumulates in this air box that drains down and out. To the left of this at the bottom you can see a reservoir tank. That reservoir tank is for your jacks. The fill for your reservoir tank is right here at the top. You just unscrew that. There's a dipstick here. You can check your fluid level here. There's the low and the high. Just make sure that your fluid's up. And when you're done uh, servicing or uh, any maintenance in this area, just take the prop rod and release it. Put it back on the hook and close it. So at the, at the front of the coach here, we're going to demonstrate the exterior lights, fog lights, headlights, and marker lights. We're going to have those turned on so you can see how they look. You can see those are your marker lights that he turned on. Now we're going to turn on the headlights, bright and dim. There's your bright and dim. Now he's going to turn the fog lights on. Those are at the bottom. 
Those are your fog lights. Now we're going to do the turn signals, left and right turn signals. There's your left, and he's going to turn the right. You always want to check all your lights before you travel. Make sure they're all working. All right, and now we'll turn all the lights out. And we'll continue on over on the, on the center of the windshield here at the bottom is your mobile eye. The mobile eye uh, is integrated into the uh, dash system and it gives you lane change warnings or if there's traffic in front of you, it gives you warnings about traffic that's nearby, that's uh, you know, in range of, of your coach. Um, we'll explain that a little bit more inside. As we continue over here, we've got uh, our side mirror. The side mirror on either side is adjustable. The adjustment screw here uh, is for the ball joint in the center. Uh, the mirrors are adjustable uh, with the electric motor switch that's on the inside. We'll talk a little bit about that. At the bottom, there is a small plug that you can remove and you can get your uh, socket in here and you can move the whole arm uh, left or right if you need additional adjustments. Once that's done you want to put this back, tighten it and put this back. But both mirrors are just the same way. On the side here this is your camera. This camera view shows uh, when you're making a turn to the right. As soon as you turn your signal on for a lane change, this camera comes on so you can see what's in that lane. There's a camera just like this on the other side for left turn. So, so as we take a look at, uh, above the entrance door here in the steps, we have our door awning. The door awning is operated from the inside with a manual switch in the overhead, so we'll demonstrate that. And that's fully extended, and then now we'll go ahead and retract it. And just below that, we have a patio light. Uh, the patio light can be turned on and off in the, just beside the passenger seat is the on off switch for that. The main awning can also be controlled from the inside or from the outside with the remote control from Carefree. So to extend the patio awning, just hit the EXT the EXT is the extend. And if you release after you hit extend, it will continue to extend. If you want to stop the extension at any time, just press the retract button once. And if you want to continue to go out again, just hit extend again. And that's fully extended. And then to uh, retract, just hit the RET one time, and then you can release and it will fully retract. So another function that the awning has is a, a type of sensor that when the awning is out or extended, if there's a lot of wind and the awning is moving, there is a sensor in the awning and when that sensor is activated, it will automatically close the awning. So we, the manufacturer recommends that the awning uh, is retracted if it's going to be raining. So. If it's in high winds and you know it's going to be high winds, uh, you want to retract it or in the rain. If you forget, uh, 
the awning will retract in, in windy conditions, uh, but it won't retract if it's raining. So definitely if you're gonna have a storm, a lot of high wind conditions, just go ahead and hit retract. Okay, so when the awning is fully extended, it does have a type of wind sensor, which is kind of a motion sensor that's installed in the awning so that if it's windy, uh, the movement of the wind on the awning and the arms will automatically make it retract. Now, the overhead switch inside above the driver's seat has to be left in the on position for that to work. So as long as that's on, uh, and the, there's some wind that picks up outside. If that wind moves the awning enough, The sensitivity for the amount of wind movement on the awning for it to close can be adjusted. So if the sensitivity of the, the movement sensor and the awning needs to be adjusted, that can be done. So we're going to start um, here at the door. As you open the entrance door, you notice the steps stayed out. And even though the door was closed, they didn't go in. There's an override switch in the overhead. If I turn it on or off, it doesn't say on or off on the switch. It just says exterior step switch. Then when I close the door, the steps will retract. So. And whenever I open the door, they'll extend. But if I want to override that and just have the steps stay out, hit the step switch in the overhead. The keys for the coach have, you can manually lock and unlock your doors. You've got manual lock and unlock here for the deadbolt and the door here. If I lock the door with the red switch in the down position, that will lock, that will lock this handle. And then to unlock it, just unlock that. And then the deadbolt, once that's locked from the inside, I can unlock it from the outside here. The key here is the longer one for your deadbolt. You can see here that operates your deadbolt in and out. So you can actually deadbolt your coach from the outside as well as the inside. The screen door has a small latch here to open and close it. it has a slider. So you can access that latch. So you can close that. From the inside, when you lift up on the latch or push down on it, that just opens and closes it here. Or you can do it from the inside here like this. And that unlocks the screen door from the inside. There is an additional step here that extends out, and we'll demonstrate that for when you're traveling. Uh, you'll be able to extend this out. You can see here it's being extended now. So that gives the passenger, um, you know, a good stable floor for travel. Um, it 
Just hit the switch again and that will retract. And we'll show that switch inside in just a minute. Okay, that is your step cover. Yep, that is our step cover that you just saw operate in and out. Underneath each step, uh, there's additional storage. So you can open those manually. At the top of the screen, there's an additional pull-down screen here. And to lock that in place, you just button it here. To retract it, same thing, just release. And you can store it that way. So moving back here to the front wheel, if you look back into the coach, you'll see a small lanyard. The lanyard is there to give you a handle to pull on to release the air out of the air system. So if I, if I grab a hold of this manually and pull it, you'll hear that air is releasing out of a low point so that moisture that's inside of your air system uh, will come out. And you should operate that or pull that lanyard every couple weeks to make sure there's no moisture in your air system. On the back side of the wheel here, you can see the jack. The jack uh, pad, um, you should visually inspect that every once in a while to make sure that your jack pads are in good condition, there's nothing stuck on them. The air inflation valve here, the stem is here. Just turn this to check your air pressure here. This is your slide out. The slide out, before you operate it in or out, you should check for clearance here between the fascia and the Z trim. And before you close it, you should always check the top of the slide out, make sure there's nothing, uh, any debris or anything that's on top of the slide before you uh, retract it. So now we're going to check the top of the slide there's nothing on the slide out, so we're going to go ahead and retract that. And then we'll move back and show you the baggage door areas. So we're going to retract the slide room. So we have our fuel fill door here, just twist to open. And you'll hear it click when it's locked back into place. It's your marker light. Our first compartment back is storage, storage area. In our second compartment back, we have our manual light switch here. And as you look up, you'll see there's some water lines. And these are our controls for the slide outs. Each control is marked with which controller they're assigned to. This one's passenger, this one's bedroom, and this one is driver. So you'll notice that the LEDs are lit up for each one and those zeros will change as the room is in operation to show what the amperage is as the slide out room is moving in and out. 
You have your accessory bag for the inner vac is here. You can manually turn the inner vac on and off here. And then you can connect your hose here if you want to do manual sweeping out here. We'll demonstrate this in a minute when we go inside. To change the bag, just grab a hold of this top, pull it out, and you can change the bag here. Each one of these doors has a lock. You can lock and unlock your baggage doors manually here. If you look at the back of the second compartment back, you've got your satellite connection and your Blu-ray here, along with your cable antenna here. Just above that, you have a 120 volt plug. If you look straight up above that, you'll see an electric motor and a shaft going in this direction. That's your slide out motor. And the slide out motor operates that's a 12 volt motor that operates your slide out in and out. So these two satellite and Blu-ray connections go up to your AV cabinet in the living room along with your cable antenna. But these are just plug-ins. Uh, they're for if you have a satellite or Blu-ray DVD. The third compartment back is your pegboard compartment and storage. Behind this compartment are your water tanks. Uh, you'll also notice there is a hose here that goes down and out the bottom. This hose is a drain hose for the slide outs. Uh, if there's any moisture that accumulates, it'll drain out that hose. Above here, we have our security lights, another marker light. You'll notice uh, in the door that we just closed, there's a fresh water overfill. So if you put too much fresh water in your tank, uh, the fresh water will come out here. If you see that overfill or flooding out here, uh, you wanna make sure that your fresh water fill is turned off. We're now here to the bedroom slide. Slide out has a slide topper awning at the top of it. And again, before you operate your slide out back in, you wanna make sure there's nothing in between the topper fabric and the roof of that slide out and nothing on top of the slide fabric itself. Once you've made sure there's nothing um, in those two areas, then you could run that room or retract it in. We have another storage compartment here. And in the last compartment door, you can see that this is going into the engine compartment area. Um, these are your chassis batteries. The chassis batteries have a connection here for your solar panel with a fuse. You'll also notice that the chassis batteries are connected to a, uh, a disconnect switch. So if I want to put my coach into a storage area 
or I'm not going to be using it for several days or several weeks, months, I can turn this off. That disconnects the two batteries, the two chassis batteries from the coach so that they don't discharge. When I'm ready to operate the coach again, turn that on and these batteries are now connected to uh, the chassis functions at the driver area. This has to be on for you to start your engine and to operate the dash control functions. So behind the battery disconnect switch, there's a fuse panel. You can release the fuse panel and you'll see on the back side, all of the fuses and the relays are labeled here. Tow, tow, turn, you got dash power, auxiliary power. So if a function uh, of a chassis um, doesn't work, this is where you would come back, whether it's a uh, light or a turn signal, uh, DEF, check that fuse or that relay. There's extra fuses over on the side here, and there's also a manual device that you can use to clip on the fuse to pull it out. When you're done, replace the fuse, put this back, and then put the cover back in place and clip it in. At the rear of the coach, to access the engine compartment, just grab a hold of this handle and open. You can see you got a radiator grill here. You have your engine oil fill, transmission fill, power steering fluid. This is your engine oil fill. This is your ECM plug. This is your filter, your air filter indicator for your engine. The air that goes into your engine enters in that top corner grill here at the top over on the driver's side. So air goes in there, comes down, goes through a large tube here, goes in your engine. Well, it's monitored about how much air is going in that filter right here. So as the, when the engine's running, you want to check this. There's a yellow tab that moves up and down. So when the engine starts, that tab moves into the green area and should stay in that green range. If it goes up here to the top in the red, that means you need to change your filter because there's too much vacuum and not enough airflow going through that filter. Yeah, this is the uh, access for your radiator. Uh, don't ever open this when the engine's warm. You want to wait till it's completely cooled off. There's a max min, min level you can see here, but never add radiator fluid uh, when it's warm. Wait till it's completely cooled down, then you can remove the cap and add fluid here. Uh, at the bottom is your tow plug connections. And if you're towing a trailer that has air supply, that uh, this is the feed for it. Just to the left of that, you'll see another lanyard here. That's to drain your uh, moisture out of your air system in the rear. You have your ladder. Just be sure to use this when it's dry. That way you won't have any issue with any slipping. Have your ladder to access the roof area. Uh, if you'll notice here, it has a caution. The capacity for the ladder is 250 pounds. So you don't want to exceed 250 pounds on this ladder. Again, the the vent area, the, the screen louvers there, that's the air intake for your engine. Working our way around to the driver's side, here at the top you have a Truma AquaGo. 
The Truma Aqua Go is your water heater for your hot water. It gives operating instructions, uh, schematic, uh, gives some cautions about the water heater here. Uh, just remember that if you're going to winterize the system, you want to open this up, flip this tab up, open this so that the tank drains. Refer to your owner's manual for more information on winterizing the system. Our first compartment door at the rear going forward has your block heater here. So if we're going to preheat our engine, we want to plug this in. That will turn our heat, our block heat on for the engine. If we, if we unplug it, it's off. This compartment is our cord reel and our connections to our, um, our, B, our battery charge bridge. If you'll notice, there's a, uh, a panel here. The panel is removable with Velcro here on each side. And there's a, a fuse and breaker ledge in here. So if you're having any issue, let's say with the entrance steps, um, power cord reel, lighting controls, all of those fuses and breakers are here in this compartment. Um, this is your battery disconnect for your house batteries. This is your um, battery connections for the house to chassis. It's our charge bridge connection. And some of these are replaceable fuses. Uh, some of them are resettable. The ones that have the small yellow and red uh, in the center, these you can reset. And the ones up here that are smaller are ones you would have to replace. If you need to replace those, make sure you replace them with the same size that you took out. At the top here is your power monitor. This monitors the amount of power coming in the coach and it gives you an LED readout. The LED readout also gives you faults. If there's any faults or any warnings, uh, they'll be displayed in the LED. You can read more about that in your operating manual. This is for your cable connection if you're getting cable from the park. And of course, this is a manual uh, plug cable uh, for your house power. Um, so when you're done, you'll have to store stow it manually. When you're done servicing this area, just put this back into the Velcro area. This is your monitor for the power that's coming in here. The power comes in on the gray line from the generator or on the black line from your shore cord. This transfers the, and gives you power inside your house, either coming in from the generator or from uh, your shore connection. So it's basically a transfer switch and it transfers the power between one or the other. So in the compartment in front of the cord reel compartment is your DEF tank. There's a gauge indicator here. The small compartment door here is your storage for your hoses uh, for your water compartment. And just in front of the rear wheel, you have your water bay compartment. The manual light switch here. And starting at the rear here, you have your whole house filter. Whole house filter has a filter wrench. The filter wrench will help you remove 
and then you can install your house filter in here. And all of the water that comes in your coach goes through this filter. All the water that goes through here into your freshwater tank or just into your coach through the city fill is all filtered. So in order to get water into the coach, it comes through the filter, but this is where our supply is connected. So we would open this up, put our hose connection on here for fresh water. Once we have our connection here uh, connected for the fresh water, then we would want to choose fresh water tank fill, open valve to fill tanks, shut off when full. So we'd want to open this up or point it to the on and that will fill our fresh water tank. If the fresh water tank is full, but we're not wanting to use the fresh water out of the tank, we always want to leave it in the off position and then we would be able to have city water coming in just from the water supply, still going through the uh, water filter, but not being used out of the fresh water tank. If we want to use uh, water out of the fresh water tank, we have to turn our water pump on, and then that pulls water out of the fresh water tank. This outside shower is what we can use when we're ready to make any rinse or clean in this area. The water pump that we just turned on has one additional filter coming in here that can be removed. You can take this off and you'll notice there's a small screen that small screen can be removed and cleaned. After it's removed and cleaned, we can just put it back in and put our cap cover back on, screwed in. So if you ever have an issue where you're getting, it's a slow water uh, fill or water is pumping slow, check that strain filter and remove it and clean it. You'll notice there's a pink winterizing solution inside this hose. This is for winterizing the coach. To winterize, the directions are here, but basically what you're doing is you're pulling your antifreeze solution through this hose with the water pump on and these valves reversed from what they are now and you want to open up all of the kitchen, bathroom, and shower, and toilet uh, so that all of those drains are filled with this winterizing solution. Those directions are all here. We won't go over the winterizing but that's why this hose has that solution in it. Once you're done winterizing, you'll put your plug back in at the end here and then reverse these two valves. Just below our outside shower, you've got your hot and cold line low point drains. If we open these, you'll notice water is draining out of our cold water lines. If we open the one that's hot, then water is draining out of our hot water lines. We want to drain our lines before we winterize. In the center, you have your gray and sewage water outlets. So if we want to drain the gray water, then this is the valve we open to pull it towards us when we're done draining through the hose, then we want to close it. Here's our black or sewage water holding tank that comes in from this side. 
To drain that, we just pull it towards us and drain through the hose. When we're done, just push it, push it to, away from you and that closes it. And then we're finished. We can put our cover back on. There's one additional low point drain for the fresh water tank. If you'll notice the white tank in the bottom here, that's where your fresh water is held. And at the very back corner, there's a handle. That handle can be pulled down and you can hear the water drain out. When you're done draining that fresh tank, then just push it back up and closes it. It closes turning clockwise. And it's labeled here, low point drain, but the handle is back here to do that low point drain for the freshwater tank. Moving back, this is your forced air furnace uh, for your LP. It's your LP furnace uh, for your heating inside the coach. When this furnace is operating, you want to make sure to keep things away from this area because hot gases are being expelled and don't touch this area because it will be hot. There's more storage area under here. Inside of this compartment, if you look back on the back wall, you'll see a control panel. This control board is connected to your overhead display for all of your HVAC functions on the touch panel of the coach. And you can, you'll notice LED lights that are lit up for the functions that are on or running. There's also a green light that flashes just to give you a, a pulse that the system is working. You'll notice these steel lines here. These are for your LP lines going through the coach and a copper line that goes up and connects to your furnace. And we have our next compartment forward are the house batteries and the LP tank. The house batteries can be checked and maintained by pulling these two pins out and then pulling the tray or extending it out towards you. So you can check uh, and service the batteries here. The battery bank is connected into the coach going through two fuses. The fuses on the right side here, protect the coach from too much amperage. If you're not getting any 12 volt power into the coach, you'll need to check your fuses. Once you're done servicing this area, close the tray and put your pins back in place. The LP tank has a regulator. The regulator controls the amount of gas that goes in the coach. This is the on-off valve, which turns this tank on and off. Clockwise is closed, counterclockwise is open. So to operate your LP appliances in the coach, you want to come over here and open this counterclockwise to close it is clockwise. There is an indicator for the amount of full. This is connected with a wire into the overhead panel so you can check the level of your LP manually or visually here or you can check it inside in your overhead. This fill valve and this fill overflow are for the place that uh, adds the gas. Uh, you should not have to do anything to these two, but if you see any 
fluid or gas coming out of either one of these, you can rotate this one clockwise to make sure it's closed. Um, and you can also close this cap here. But again, if you see any issue with any leak, uh, immediately turn off the valve here and you'll need to get service. This is the driver's side diesel fuel fill here. It goes to the same tank, so you can fill your tank from either side. This, of course, is another marker light. And at the front wheel here, again, you have your uh, valve stem coming out here where you can add or take air out of the wheel tire. You can see your jack in the back here. At the top of the slide out, again, you have a slide topper, the fabric. Make sure, again, that if you're opening or closing this slide out or any, that you have the topper on and make sure there's nothing on top of or in between that fabric. As we looked at at the beginning of the video for the outside, this is the release for the front hood. These are the chassis fuses and relays and ECM. This fuse panel is the cockpit fuse panel and relay panel. So all of the functions in the cockpit area have a fuse here. If you see any of the red LED lights lit up on this panel, that would mean that your fuse is blown or that your relay is not working for that particular LED. So any red light that you see, that fuse would want to be uh, checked. So to check one of your fuses, just pull it out, hold it up. If it's blown, we have spare fuses here. Make sure you get a fuse that's the, rated the same exact number and then replace that fuse. The LED light should go out. So we're in the cockpit area and just beside the driver's seat we have our equalizer systems for our leveling and this control panel operates the jacks up and down and they can work all in unison uh, by pressing the auto level button. Now keep in mind that you want to level your coach but before you do that you want to run the slide rooms out first and that's with the coach already aired up so when you come to your destination you'll be uh, on your air ride you'd want to check your reveals in all your slide outs and then extend the slide out rooms if there's plenty of distance between the reveals. Once the slide outs are all extended, you have to have the power turned on. After you turn the power on, you'll have to turn the ignition key on. And then you would press any one of these manually to operate the jacks down or the easier way is just hit auto level and then it goes into leveling it to the preset parameters uh, that uh, Newmar set at the factory. So press auto level. And you can see all of our lights for the jacks are flashing. That means they're in operation. You get your LED light that says operating. And then you can start to feel the coach move a little bit as the jacks touch the ground.
can see the coach moving a little bit as it levels. Making small adjustments. And you heard the small beep, that means you're level. You can power down, turn the key off, power down, and your coach is level. Uh, there is a Bluetooth way to operate your jacks. It's called EQ Smart Level, um, and it's compatible uh, with most phones. If you have a smartphone, you can turn the Bluetooth on, download the app, and you'll be able to operate your jacks from your phone. Uh, moving forward, you have your exterior lights we saw earlier in the video headlights, parking lights, and off. Our fog lights are here. Once our headlights are on, we have our dome light switch here and our battery boost switch is here. So in the event that our engine is not starting, we can press the battery boost button here to house or to chassis and that boosts either, either bank. We have our mirror adjustment left or right. And if our key is on, you'll notice that when we turn this small rocker switch on, it illuminates red and that turns on, that turns on the heat for the mirrors. So that will defrost the mirrors, the exterior left and right driver and passenger mirror and remove the frost or the moisture. Once we make the adjustments to the mirror up and down, left or right, you can just set that to the other one adjust and then leave it in the middle. And that way, if you touch any of the adjustment directions and it's in the middle, it won't move either mirror. When you're done with the heat, turn that off. These are louvers for the air conditioning and heat. At the top here, there's an access panel that's Velcroed down so we can access in behind the dash. And then our glass dash is illuminated here because we have the ignition key on. Just real quick, we'll go over what these dials mean. The large one here on the left is the RPM gauge. The one in the center is where you can press the home button up on the left side of the wheel and you can scroll to different areas tire pressure monitoring there's the mobile eye uh, there's trip monitoring fuel economy <clears throat> and then once you have made a selection you press the OK button and you can hit OK to reset for instance distance to empty so if I hit OK, it's refiguring how many miles I have till empty. So again, that's our home button, and we can this this here scrolls to all of the different features that we can monitor as we're driving. To make slight adjustments, let's say we've chosen our favorites button here on the left for our steering effort. Up, scroll up or down to change your effort for your steering to more going up or less going down. These two minus and plus are for the volume for your speakers for your radio. Over here is your uh, miles per hour gauge. Your uh, front and rear pressure indicator for your air in the front and rear. Um, of course, this is your battery voltage here, your fuel gauge here. And again, this gives the indications for the uh, any changes you make in, uh, let's say the drive or reverse, what we'll show here in the window. And uh, let's go ahead and demonstrate that really quick. If, if we start the engine, and sit down. If we make a change, I have to press the brake here. 
if we change to drive, you'll notice here, there's our shift indicator goes to drive, or we go to reverse, we go to reverse. The other controls here on this handle are the engine brake. If we want that brake to be turned on, we just turn it on here. So in addition to the drive and reverse, if we're in the drive and we're, direct, we're moving forward, we can choose manually or automatic for our shifting. And then we can shift manually here. Or if we leave it in automatic, we, uh, we won't have the ability to shift here. So we can change gears here or we can leave it in automatic on this right handle. On the left handle, over on this side, you've got your wiper wash control here. If we want to operate our headlights in bright, the indicator is here. There's our bright and dim. Our turn signal left and right is here. And then our wiper delay is here. That's on fast, regular, and then intermittent is here or here. On the steering wheel on the right hand side, we have our cruise control here, cruise set, resume and set. And if we want to mute the speakers for the radio, we can just hit mute here and that mutes the radio. Uh, if you want to make a telephone call, that would be here, making the telephone call and then hanging up. If you look over on my left side where my foot is, there's a, near the floor, there's a paddle. You can press down on it, and now you can see I have full range of motion, telescoping wheel, or tilt. And once I get it where I want it to be adjusted, then I just release the foot pedal, and it locks into place. So moving over to the right of the glass dash panel, we have another louver and our camera and our radios. So you have the on-off for your Voyager cameras. Um, these are your settings button for your volume. So I can actually pick up volume um, from the outside of the coach for that rear camera. This is my control for volume, return, and exit. Picture, video, scanning, trigger, delay, reset, exit. And uh, the AV is for your contrast, color, and tint. Over here is our menu for our radio. This is an Exit radio. Um, Turn your radio on here. And then of course you can change your bands. For navigation, that's the Navi button. It doesn't look like we're picking up any navigation because we're inside the building. And then of course you have your favorites button here. And those are your favorite settings there. Back to the menu. Back to the menu here, there's Media Center, uh, Sirius Radio, Bluetooth. You can Bluetooth your phone and you can uh, play uh, music through your phone. Just select phone here. And then you would pair your phone and then it would play through the radio here as long as your Bluetooth is on. This is going into the settings. Um, that was your settings icon. It's showing Bluetooth now. And then back to the menu here. Just below the radio and the camera 
you've got your visor control and your shade, and that's for the front windshield. Visor and shade. You'll notice that it's going up in either direction. That's because I have the key turned on. If the key is off, then I can move the shade back down. It's a safety function, a safety feature that if the key is on and you hit the shade button, it will always go up so that you can always view out the front windshield. And it will only come down to the halfway point if the key is on. Same with the visor, the visor is behind it. And you'll see the visor will only go down to the halfway point as well. And it stops the same way. Just beside our visor and shade, we have the overhead fans. And that moves the air in the front windshield area to keep things uh, defrosted uh, and air movement for cooling and heating. You can adjust the fan speed here in the front with the low, medium, high switch, and then off. The generator start is here. Just uh, start the generator, just press and hold the button down for a few seconds while it primes. And preheats. And preheats. And then when we're done with the generator, we just hit the stop button. This is our air horn. If we want to turn the air horn off, just press down and then we're back to the street horn. Just beside that are your controls for your air conditioning and heat in the cab area. This is your fan speed settings. If we press this button, that turns the air conditioner on, but you have to have the key on with the engine running. And, the fan well, speed on. and you have to have a, span, a fan speed selected. As long as the blue LED light comes on, that means that your air conditioning system is turned on. And then you can adjust the heat or cool here. And then you also select uh, where you want the direction of that air to go, whether that's defrost, or a mixture of any one of those other selections. Turning it off, just press again. This recycles and that's off. We have a couple extra uh, outlets here. That's for our, this one is for your USB-C or USB connection for charging as well as a regular 12 volt outlet for charging. This is the door lock for the exit door or the entrance door, you can hear the lock and the unlock. Below that, we have an extra storage drawer, uh, anti-glare screen for your radio if you like it, and another storage drawer there below. Just between the driver and passenger seat, you have your smoke detector here in the living room area. You'll notice there is a LED light that flashes just to let you know that it's awake. But if you want to run the self-test, you can just press up in the middle of it. And that tells you that it is powered up and ready to operate in case you have uh, smoke in the coach. That alarm will sound. If you press the self-test te button or and you don't hear any beep or tone or you don't see the LED light flashing, that means you need to check the batteries. Moving over here to the passenger console area, you've got your fire extinguisher, your battery disconnect. So if I press this button, it will disconnect the batteries from the coach and my lights would go out. You have your step cover, your map light, and your patio exterior lights for your patio. Uh, the step cover we show, we'll show in another video, but we'll go ahead and operate it again really quick. If we press that, our step cover comes out and up so we can stand right here above the steps. The shades here are all manual. 
pull down and lift up to release. Stop at halfway or three quarter, whatever spot you stop, it will stop. You have your ceiling lights here. Again, these turn on and off lights in the coach, bathroom, bedroom. Um, you can go to high or low. If we turn the battery disconnect off and then back on, you will need to turn your ceiling lights back on. Of course, this is your safety belt. Um, up in the front here, these are more storage cabinet here and here. The seat has adjustment forward and back here. And this is the seat back tilt here. And these two controls here um, release the seat. If I'm sitting in it, releases the footrest, push down to store it. And this one is to turn the seat. This one, this one in the front is to turn the seat. If I want to turn the seat all the way around, I'll need to move the desk forward and then I can turn my seat around. To store, to stow or store the seat back in the original position, I just move around and it will lock back in place. Now it's locked again. The driver's seat has the same control, except it has one less control because it doesn't have a footrest, but it operates the same. Um, go ahead and do the table while you're there. Flip the table over. Okay. On the passenger side, we have a table. We can flip up and over for the co-pilot. And when we're done, we just stow it back down and we can fold this back this way out of the way so above the steering wheel for the driver we have our overhead cabinet with our controls starting on the left side is our water heater control on and off this is for the truma aqua go there is an eco mode that you can turn it into to save power the middle is on and then you have your clean down at the very bottom and just refer to your owner's operator's manual for those modes at the bottom for cleaning if you happen to turn it into the cleaning mode and then back up to one of the other modes there's a delay in time of a couple hours before it will actually turn on because it was in the cleaning mode this is the in and out for your door awning here. This is for your patio awning here. Uh, the awning does have lights, exterior lights on and off. The door awning is in and out. There's no on off switch for it, but in order for the patio awning to extend, you have to have it turned on or up, and then you can hit extend that moves the awning out and then retract or move back in. And if you extend your awning and you're gonna leave the coach for a while, but you want the awning to be able to self retract in case it gets windy, you have to leave it in the on position. So don't turn it off if you're gonna be leaving the coach and it's extended. Over here, you've got your security lights here on this side, your security lights, once they're turned on, you'll get the LED indicator. The exterior step, if we turn that on, the steps will stay out, whether the door, the entrance door is open or closed. And then we have our slide outs, um, off door and door side, in and out. We have our antenna for our TV as long as this is turned on, you'll get an LED indicator and you're going to be watching over the air. If you turn this off, okay, right now the control for the TV is turned on and it's scanned for channels, it's found one. If you turn this off, then you'll be able to watch the cable or part cable. But if this is turned on, you're only going to be able to watch over the air TV. 
We'll talk a little bit more about that when we turn the TV on. This is your inverter and battery charger. The inverter charges the house batteries, but it also takes the battery power from the house batteries and gives you power inside the coach for your television, for your refrigerator, and appliances in the coach. This is the on-off switch here for it. And these are the other setting controls. Just refer to your owner's manual for those setting controls. But this button here is what turns it on and off. This is our power control system monitor panel. The monitor panel uh, shows you what power source that you're plugged into. Right now it's showing that our power source is a 50 amp service plug. You can scroll up or down to view more of the status or load statuses, operating modes. And as you scroll, you'll notice that uh, it's showing line one and line two and the voltage and amperages that are being used on those lines. So this is what's monitoring whether your air conditioner is on and how many amps it's pulling as well. So this monitors your block heater, your water heater, tells you what status it is. If you ever see the status is off, that means that this control has shed that appliance because there's not enough power for it to operate. So for instance, if you only were plugged into uh, let's say 120 volt line, um, then this will protect you from tripping breakers by it will automatically load shed those appliances. Just refer to your owner's manual for more information on load shedding and operating this control. That's your satellite prep. There's a pull wire in there so that you can pull your uh, satellite wires down to this area and there's a plug here for your satellite receiver if you choose to install a satellite and receiver. So moving over into the dining room area we've got more storage area and these cabinets on both sides left and right and you'll notice in the AV which is your audio visual cabinet we have a speaker set up here um, and it's pre-run wiring. If you would choose to install a satellite, this would be where you would plug your satellite receiver in or DVD player. This is where you would plug your DVD player in. Um, the satellite hookups are on the back. Again, these are ready to have the satellite or the DVD installed. It did not come with this coach. And these connections go from here to the television if you choose to connect a satellite or DVD player. On the back wall you have another manual shade. Behind the shade you've got your window open or closed, crank out and in with screen, left and right. You have your TV behind this wall, and to operate the TV up and down, you have to press the TV lift. Go to the TV lift button and press up, and now you'll be able to see your TV lift going up. So once our TV lift is up, we would just find the remote control, and we can turn the TV on, and you'll need to scan whether you're watching cable or over the air, you'll need to scan for those channels. And you wanna remember that if you're scanning for over the air channels, you have to have this turned on so that it can scan for the channels. After you've scanned the channels for your television for over the air channels, Let's say you want to watch cable, then you'd have to turn this off in order for you to be able to scan for the cable channels on your TV. 
So you have to scan for either one and to watch over the air, the antenna has to be turned on, but to watch for cable, the antenna for over the air has to be turned off. So at the dinette area, the table can be folded down or positioned down after the cushions are removed, and then we can fold it into a bed. So we'll demonstrate that. If we remove these cushions, There's a release handle on the there's a release handle here on the table. I'm gonna push that down. Then you can move the whole table assembly down until it's level here. There's an extra cushion that you put in the middle. And that's how it folds into a bed. So then when you're ready to put it back up, just remove the cushions. And you'll just need to lift the table back up. You have to have it all the way up to lock it back in place. You have to push on the center bar a little bit, then you can lock this back in place, and then just put your cushions back on the seat. On each side, at the front, there's a drawer that you can pull out for storage. On the back wall of the Dyna area, you have USB chargers, a 120 volt outlet, and of course all your seating and water pump and backlighting controls. Moving into the kitchen area here, uh, we have our sink covers. Uh, these sink covers can be stowed in the bottom of these cabinets here. There's a telescoping sprayer here, hot and cold adjustment. Manual shade and crank out window with screen. There is additional storage, of course, above here. You'll notice there's a plug here. That's for your microwave. It powers up your microwave. There is additional information on your coach from Freightliner inside here with your complete VIN number and paint colors here. Of course, this is our trash receptacle, more cabinet space underneath the sinks along with drawer space. Your coach comes with the touch-up paint here. 
you'll have the awning control, Bose speaker control, extra set of keys. This is your whole house filter wrench to remove the filter, replace it. Your warranty registration paperwork for your Truma is here. And in this drawer you have your owner's operator's manual for your, or your maintenance manual for your Freightliner chassis. Additional information on your tires and your chassis along with the center hub wrench for your wheels. And there's an extra air fitting here for your auxiliary air. We have all of your warranty registration paperwork comes in this black case. And it's cat categorized for plumbing, heating, exterior, electrical, and appliances here. So you want to make sure and take all of your warranty registration cards, fill them out, and mail them in so you can activate your warranty on all of your appliances. And of course, we have the microwave here. The microwave has two latching mechanisms. Numar adds this one at the bottom, but of course the, the one that comes with the door originally is here. Just refer to your owner's operator's manual to set your clock or your time and how to operate. This folds up and out of the way for your range and your controls for the range are fairly simple. Just the, this is your ignition. There is uh, backlighting for the controls if you want that on. Uh, but just to light, you just turn it to the left and you'll have to press the ignition to light off. If you don't get ignition here, uh, you can pull this out and there are batteries behind here. You can change the batteries if you need to, or if you're not getting any spark, uh, you want to check your batteries. That's usually what you need to check. Below the range, we have more storage space. And when you're finished in this area, just fold this back down. You can. If you want, you can remove this completely out of the way. Just lift it out of its channel in the back for more space or cooking area. Put it back in place, just set it there, and then fold it back down. So we're moving over to the Norcold refrigerator. This refrigerator operates on 12 volt. The on off button is here. So just turning it on or off is just a press of a button. And then once we have it turned on to set the lower freezer compartment, you press that button and you can adjust the numbers up and down or to adjust the upper part, then you can adjust the numbers up or down here. To turn it off, just press and hold, and the lights should go out, and now it's turned off. The doors are self-locking, so when you close it, they automatically lock when they latch. So there's no additional locking mechanism there's a handle right here in the middle. You have to put your hand in and press, to pull that out and unlock. You can see this one's been running. It has some ice made. That's the ice maker area. If you want to turn the ice maker off, there's a bail arm that you have to reach back and lift the bail arm up and that turns the ice maker off.
There's a pantry storage area door here. Uh, moving over into the uh, living room area at the entertainment center, uh, we have storage compartments above all the way along the top row. We have our manual shades, manual, and you can see here you've got the crank open windows on the left and the right with the screen. But in case of an emergency, you can exit out of this window just by lifting these handles to release and then push out to exit. And then this is just closing it again. So close our shade. We have our controls back here for the TV lift we saw earlier. Uh, we have our our wall lights, right and left, TV lift up and down, backlighting for the switch plates. The backlighting goes dimmer or off. Then we, of course, have our ceiling lights high and low and accent lights. And, of course, our ceiling lights on and off. In the center here, we have our Extra storage space, our TV controls, along with our, our Samsung control. Both the left and right seats have a open or extend for our footrest. There's also a USB charger in the center there. And they both operate the same way, open and close. There's additional storage space here. So at the end of the living room, moving into the kitchen area, you have additional storage space here and down below. Moving back of the living room area, you'll see three devices here. This is the room temperature sensor and will turn off the heat and or cooling in this area of the coach. This is our fantastic vent control with speeds up and down and our rain sensor override. So to operate the fantastic vent, we just press up and then we can adjust the speeds of that fan. See it's slowing down because I'm adjusting the speed to go down. And then when I'm finished, and just press the down and it closes. If for some reason there was moisture on the rain sensor and you couldn't get it to open, you can override the rain sensor or any moisture that might be on the sensor just by pressing the and holding down the down button for a few seconds. You'll notice the LED light comes on for the rain sensor being off. So that turns your rain sensor off so that you can actually operate the fan. Even if it was a slight rain outside, you could turn it on and, uh, and operate it the same way. When you want to turn the rain sensor back on, just hold that down arrow for a few seconds and you'll notice the rain sensor LED light goes out. Just above that, we have our KIB control panel for our coach. Uh, we have all of our indicators for our tanks. We have our automatic generator start controls here and our HVAC controls. And of course, at the end, we have our lighting controls. We can turn the lights on and off from this panel. Just behind that, we have our bathroom. Inside the bathroom, we have our shower. Our shower controls are basically left and right for hot and cold. And we have a removable uh, shower sprayer on and off. We can turn this on and off. The door is just a slider door with the lock here. But for travel, when we close this 
when we close these two doors, we want to make sure and push down on the latching mechanism and that locks the doors so they don't move during travel. On the back side here, we have got another shade. And you, day and night shade, both. And they're manually operated. And the uh, crank for the window, if we want to get air. The toilet is a Dometic, just a manual flush. So if we want to flush the toilet, we just press with our foot here, and that will flush the toilet. We have more storage here on the back and our mirror doors for our medicine cabinet. Hot and cold adjust for our sink and more storage area under the sink. On the inside wall, you'll notice another fantastic vent control here. It operates just like the one for the kitchen, along with our ceiling lighting controls, vanity, and we can turn our water pump on from here or our backlighting here. Above us, you'll notice the fantastic vent here in the bathroom. In the event that the control for the automatic controls did not work for some reason, you can still reach up, grab a hold of the control here. You can open the vent and the fan will still come on. When you're done, you just close the vent and the fan will go out. So there's a manual way to operate that fan. If for any reason the fan doesn't work, even though the control LED lights are all lit up, that might mean that this little fuse that you can turn and pull out might need to be checked. If you check it and you don't see a straight line in the middle there, it's broke, then you'll have to replace that fuse. There is an additional ceiling vent here. That vent is where the air conditioning and or the heat pump air come out into the bathroom area. Back here in the hallway, we have our heating vent for our forced air furnace. We have our inner vac connection and our inner vac uh, manual sweep opening. So if we open that, we can just sweep whatever here and that will go down into the bag and be collected. Or if we want to put our accessories on, we can open this. There's a small tag that you'll have to remove here. Once you remove the tag, you know, it does have a warning that says, check to ensure dust bag and motor filter are installed. So you just want to make sure that your filter is installed in the intervac downstairs. Once we remove that, we can open our accessory bag and We have the accessories for sweeping the floor. And you can see here, once we connect the hose here, we'll be able to put our other accessories on this end and just by simply pressing the on off button, the LED light comes on and it, and it uh, vacuums. If you have any questions about how to change the battery in here or how to operate it, you can use the QR code here, scan it and get more information online. But it's fairly simple, just turning it on and off right there. One thing you want to be careful of is if you're going to store this away, um, even though this is not connected, if you press the button, it'll still turn the vacuum on. So when you coil up your hose inside here, you just want to make sure that nothing is pressing against that on off switch. Moving into the bedroom 
on the ceiling we have a carbon monoxide detector and it operates very similar to the smoke detector in the kitchen area. There's an LED light that flashes every minute, but you can also do a self-test here just by pressing. It gives you the beep tone. That is the same thing you'll hear if it would go off. So you hear four tones, then a pause, and then four more tones. That means that this is operating correctly uh, and it should work if there's any CO2 detected. We have our pocket door. To operate the pocket door open and close, just press this down to unlock it, and then we can close the door. When it goes to the end, you'll see that it clicks again, and it's locked. So when it's closed, it's locked. No, it didn't. Well, it's supposed to be. To unlock the door, just press down again to unlock it, then you can open it. You can see here another room temperature sensor for this rear zone. That's the temperature sensor for heating and cooling for your HVAC system. And these are your controls for both the driver side and passenger side slide rooms. So to extend, you press out and to bring the rooms back in, you just press in. So if I wanted to bring that room in, I just press the in. Now that slide out will come in. And again, just to go out, just press the out button and the room will go back out. On each side, of the bed, we have our nightstands with our 120 volt plug. Above the bed, we have more storage area, another 120 volt plug. And you'll notice there's illuminated panels here for our ceiling and accent lights, along with the security light switch in case we want to turn our security lights on from this position. On both sides of the slide out, we have our shades and the sliding window with screen so we can open our windows if we like to get some fresh air. They're screened. The nightstand on that side is the same as the other side with 120 volt outlet and USB plugs. We have a closet here with mirrored doors. On the back side of the closet, we have our breaker box, breaker box for all of our appliances throughout the coach, along with our lighting control system, spare fuses and fuse panel. All of the fuses here are labeled here. If you have anything like water heater, power vent, HVAC controls, or anything that's not working, just look at the number of the fuse, F5, F14, whatever the number is, go here, match the number, then pull the fuse out and check it. If you need to replace it, we have the spare fuses here. Just make sure to get the same size to replace that fuse. If any of the appliances aren't working, you want to come back to this area, look at that particular name of that appliance, like refrigerator here. Just make sure that that breaker is to the right or on. All of these are on now. If the breaker is slightly tripped, even if it's halfway tripped or slightly under half, it has to be all the way turned off and then moved back to the right, you'll hear a click, that means it's on. So just make sure that all your breakers are on for any appliance that might not be working. At the uh, left side of the rear closet, we have our hot and cold connections for our washer and dryer and our washer and dryer 120 volt plugs to give the washer and dryer power. 
There's an additional access panel here for your water heater. So that's your Truma uh, water heater, and that's a continuous water heater system. There is inside the closet a manual light here at the top, so you can turn that on and off. Once you close the door, you want to lock it in place for travel. There's a little latching mechanism here at the top, so you push that down. Now the doors lock together, so neither door can move against the other one. To unlock it to access your clothes, then just flip it up. Now you can move the door open. Either one. In the corner here is all the plumbing for your washer and your dryer. There's a dryer vent location there, so you can vent that dryer out. There's also a manual light in this compartment. This space can be used for a washer, dryer, or it's got a hanger here uh, if you wanted to use it as a closet. Just below the rear closet, there is a access panel, a wood access panel that clips into place. Um, and you'll notice that there is a, a floor, a removable floor piece here. This is the engine access uh, here and here. So if this was removed, then we could remove the floor panel to get into the access the engine for service or repair. It just pulls out and the clips release. And then when you're done accessing, just push the clip back in place and it locks in place. To uh, lift the bed and access underneath the bed, you just pull up. And you can see here, screwed in place. So if you wanted to check the motor or the gears or the wiring um, for the bed or underneath the bed for the slide motors, um, you can remove these panels. On the wardrobe side in the bedroom, we have another audio visual cabinet. Um, we have labeled the connections here. Um, front satellite, if you had a satellite, or the HDMI cord here for the TV, along with 120-volt uh, outlets um, for, let's say, you had a DVD player or receiver for your satellite. You can install that here in the audio-visual cabinet. There's additional storage space here and below with the drawers. And of course, uh, an egress window for emergency exit. Uh, push the handle down, push out. You can also just leave it latched there if you just want air ventilation into the room. Um, if you need to emergency exit, you'll just lift the screen out and then just push the window out and go out. To close it, just pull and latch it back in place. And there's more storage up in this compartment. These two top ones. And we have our ceiling, panel controls, kitchen, living room, dresser, accent lights, and another 120 volt plug. So in the living room area and the bedroom area, you have your drop ceiling and you have your air for your heat pump and or air conditioning that air comes out these louvers. But in behind there are filters that you'll need to clean every few weeks, depending on how often you operate the air conditioning. 
or the heat pumps. And you'll see the filters are here. There's four. So you have four filters and you need to reach up here. You may need to get a small stool to stand on, but you grab a hold of the louver and just pull down. You pull down, the whole louver comes out and then you can take the filter off you can vacuum the filter clean and then you can see there's a little dust there vacuum it and then hand wash with uh, warm soapy water and let them air dry then put them back on in place and then just clip it back in and you need to keep those clean for good airflow and good heating and ventilation from the rooftop air conditioners just clip them back in place so when you're done cleaning the filters, you want to close your drop ceiling. You want to line up your ball joints on both sides. You won't be able to see it, but you can lift on both sides to line up one end and then you press into place. Now it's back locked into place.